Hey, everybody. I just wanted to welcome everybody back to the uh, Truth About Real Estate Investing YouTube channel. Uh, today's topic is going to be surrounding the current market uh, and some of the stuff that we're seeing in the current market. Uh, we get, as realtors, we get lots of questions uh, with regards to uh, you know, what's going on in the market. Uh, what that really means from an investor's perspective is, is it a good time to buy? Um, a real estate investment property. So, I mean, the one answer I will give to that particular question right off the bat is there is never really a good time to buy a, an investment property. Uh, the best time to buy is now at the end of the day. Um, I, my, my one story about that is I purchased an investment property in 2017. Uh, it was at the peak of the market. And, um, you know, three months later, that investment was down $50,000. Now, five years, fast forward five years later, and that investment is now up uh, double what I actually purchased it for. So uh, there never, it really is a bad time to buy an investment property, um, even with the craziness that's going on in the market right now, as long as you have a long-term perspective, um, you know, investing in real estate uh, is good anytime. So I just wanted to quickly take you through uh, some information that we've kind of been seeing in the market. Um, I have um, a slide that uh, we will share with you as well. So uh, in this particular slide, um, there is uh, you know, a list of a uh, particular type of home that we're looking for when we do duplex conversions. Um, and you know, most typically it's a, a 1950s style bungalow. Uh, the area I've chosen is the Hamilton Mountain because that's one of the popular spots that we, uh, we look for investment properties. And from the data here, what you can actually see is, um, you know, sort of up until mid-February, we saw uh, the market, you know, really going crazy in terms of the, the price that we were seeing in terms of selling prices. You know, uh, one house on here, uh, 118 Hardale sold at $960,000 and it was, uh, it was in terrible condition. Uh, it wasn't in terrible condition, but it needed lots of work um, and it sold at 960. And then we saw a couple houses that, you know, uh, really nicely updated uh, selling for over a million dollars, which was unheard of in the Hamilton market. So the market kind of in the first six weeks of the year went crazy. And then all of a sudden we started to see a little bit of a shift. Um, so I would say mid-February point, uh, you know, we saw, we, thought, we started to see houses come back down to sort of where they were uh, Q4 of last year. So a lot more reasonable in terms of uh, where we would expect the entry point to be for some of these houses. Um, and uh, to the point where, you know, now we're starting to see stuff kind of level off and, and, and sell in the low 800,000 in the Hamilton market. So um, we are definitely starting to see a shift with regards to uh, in terms of pricing. Um, so that's definitely, you know, from, a, from an investor perspective, um, one tip I can give is that you do definitely need to be out there. Um, I know that everybody is waiting sort of for the perfect time or for the, for the bottom of the market. And the reality is we can't really time the bottom of the market. We just need to be ready to go. Um, and, you know, go back to my story, even if you buy at a slightly elevated price now, uh, if you're, you're holding this investment long-term, uh, you're more than likely to recover the full value of that, whatever the market drops in the next little bit. Um, the parallel that I also wanted to draw with regards to 2017, um, you know, as I mentioned, I did buy at the peak of the market in 2017. Um, and I shared this particular slide at our, at our IWIN meeting last month. Um, but, what we saw in 2017, uh, leading up to sort of the peak in the market, which, which was sort of the, the March, April timeframe, uh, the two months prior to that, uh, you know, the market had kind of uh, dropped down as December typically does. Um, and then it really ramped up in the first two or three months of the year. Uh, so from, you know, December to sort of the March, April timeframe, we saw a 27% increase in terms of price. Um, and then they introduced, there were two main things that were introduced in, in 2017 that kind of cooled the market a bit. Uh, there was a fair housing plan, and they also um, implemented the uh, qualifying rate for, uh, for mortgages. So that kind of cooled the market for a bit. Uh, you know, it kind of leveled off for the next couple months, and then, it, you know, in the, in the summer months, it really kind of dropped off. Uh, the one big difference between now and 2017 is they, they really saw a huge spike in terms of the number of listings that uh, that came out sort of in the March, April timeframe. Uh, so if you kind of fast forward to what we're seeing today, uh, very similar parallel in terms of uh, where the prices have gone. So uh, in December, you know, we kind of hit a low, which, which is kind of typical just because that month tends to be a little bit slower. And then, you know, January, February saw a huge spike up. 
Uh, and so it was about a 20% increase over that three month period. Um, and, you know, right now what we're seeing is interest rates obviously have already increased by a quarter of a point. Uh, there are rumors out there that, you know, interest rates are expected to go up maybe, maybe another half point. So, you know, year to date, that would be three quarters of a point increase. Um, you know, stuff like that, uh, interest rate changes that quickly are, are definitely going to have an impact on the market um, until people can kind of figure out, uh, you know, ways around that. And then things will kind of, uh, you know, start to increase again. So that's currently what we're seeing. It's very, the market right now is very typical of what we saw, uh, not typical, but very similar to what we saw in 2017. Um, and the other thing I'll mention as well is I, I, my own personal opinion on this is that at the beginning of uh, 2020, prior to COVID, uh, we did start to see this huge ramp up in prices. And I feel like, uh, you know, COVID kind of cooled that and stopped that from, stopped prices from going crazy. Um, but really all it did is delay, uh, delay what was going to happen uh, a couple of years out. So I think we're, we're definitely experiencing uh, now, what was probably likely going to happen in 2020 if, if COVID had not hit. And then the last thing I wanted to share is um, in terms of the current number of listings. So uh, it, listings in, in this, uh, the data that I'm showing uh, in the slide is from the Hamilton uh, Burlington market. Uh, so it's the RAB, the um, Hamilton Burlington Realtors Association. Uh, the we really did see a big spike in terms of the number of listings in March. So March data was just released. Um, and what you can kind of see from this graph is, you know, we're almost at total number of unit sales, uh, unit new listing, new listing units uh, is almost at 2,500. Uh, in January, we were right in and around 1,000. Uh, December, we were at 500. So if you compare, uh, you know, right current end of March to uh, where we were at December, that's, that's a five times, you know, it increased by five times. Uh, if you're looking in comparison versus January, that's a two and a half time increase. Um, and even if you're comparing month over month, there's about, been about a 40 plus percent increase uh, in terms of new number of listings. So uh, definitely a lot more new listings are coming out. We've definitely seen prices start to stabilize a bit, which is a good sign. Um, I think buyers are getting a little bit, um, you know, maybe a little bit nervous about what's going to be happening in the market. So what it, what that ultimately means at the end of the day is that this is a really good opportunity if you are an investor uh, looking to purchase a property. Um, I'm not saying that we're at the bottom by any means, um, but it is a good opportunity uh, to get out there. Uh, one another you know tip that I can definitely give to you is that uh, one of the key things uh, you know a lot of our successful clients do is they're they're out there looking. Um, you know, you can't, at the end of the day, you can't purchase a property sitting on the sidelines. You got to be out there looking, uh, even if you're looking at, you know, five or six properties, uh, waiting till offer day to kind of see how things go. Um, you got to be out there looking at properties and, um, you know, you'll, you'll end up finding the right property for you, um, and at a great investment property to your current portfolio. So hope you found that helpful. Um, if you did, please hit the like button and, uh, I look forward to speaking to you guys again soon. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn how to invest in real estate from scratch, my team teaches beginners how to use the number one investment strategy that I personally use in a virtual free training class every month. Go to investortraining.ca slash YouTube to register for our next class. The link is also in the description as well. I publish at least two to three videos a week here, so subscribe if you want to keep learning from seasoned investors like myself and my guests. And if you're just starting out, feel free to ask questions and comment below. And I do the best to answer each of those comments and questions myself. Again, if you're ready to learn the nitty gritty about real estate investing from a professional investor, register for our next virtual class. That's at investortraining.ca slash YouTube. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video.